All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be going over how to pass your technical interviews. Um, and this is going to be geared towards network engineers, but this is still going to be valuable for people who are in def different tech fields because I think interviews are just interviews and it's all, you know, there's certain things you have to say during interviews that are, doesn't matter, it transcends all fields. So um, wh what exactly is the interview and why, we, why do we even have interviews? So when it comes to tech, you know, that's the, the way they're going to determine whether you're a hireable person is by conducting interviews. And, and I said interviews because there's going to be multiple interviews. So the process is you're essentially, you, you okay, I'm going to go with the process. You applied for a position and the recruiter is most likely going to hit you up first. The recruiter hits you up saying, hey, so-and-so, um, I would like to schedule a call with you to see if you're a good fit for the role. So that is the first qualifying call. That call is just going to see if you're qualified for the position in the first spot. Are you a citizen? Are you able to work these hours? Um, do you have these certain skills? Um, they may ask very little technical questions, most likely not, but they may ask depending on the role. Um, and they'll say, okay, cool, um, cool. And then at that point, if you did well in that first initial interview, because um, they're going to ask you, tell me about yourself. Um, and if you don't know, how to answer that question, you're going to maybe fail that first recruiter call. Um, so really when they ask you, tell me about yourself, they're asking about your background. They're asking about your technical background that's relevant for the job. They don't care, they just met you. They, they don't really care about you, they care about what you can do for them. So they're asking about your technical expertise and your background. So you're gonna talk about your experience. If you have experience, if you don't have experience, talk about your project, talk about your university degree. Um, and talk about the stuff that you've done and how it's relevant to the company. And most likely you should have done research on the company ahead of time to know what sort of projects they're looking for um, that, so you can add those relevant projects. For example, let's say you have a recruiter call with a company and you see that they're into the telecommunication side, ISP side. Okay, then you would most likely should, but if you're smart, before you would, you would do a project before the, the actual recruiter call do that project and then talk about that project if you don't have experience. If you do have experience, tailor that experience to how it's relevant to the job. So say, hey, I work at this company, I've been doing this, I work in this project, I see that you guys are very, I, I see you guys do a lot of this sort of sector and my my, my current role, I, I'm very, I do um, things that are very similar to that and I can see some sort of um, similarities with that. So yeah, um, I'm really interested in working in this company and I would love to learn more about the company as well. So obviously you would you know say more things, but that's sort of how you would tailor it. Um, that way the recruiter is going to feel more comfortable. This person is, seems like they're qualified. They have some sort of relevant experience to what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and move this person to the next interview. The next interview is going to be a technical interview. It's, it can They can do it a variety of different ways. It could be a panel interview with multiple people. It can be a single interview with just the manager. It could be the manager and one engineer. It could be the manager and director. Could, there's different combinations, but some combinations can be multiple interviews. Sometimes it's just one panel interview with like five engineers and like the manager director, and then they make the decision then. Um, or sometimes it's like one engineer, another engineer, another manager, and then the director. So it, it depends on the style of how the company does it. And I can't tell you exactly how they're going to do it, but that's what they'll most likely do um, in that technical interview. This is where the before work matters the most. A lot of people, their main struggle is they don't study for interviews. They don't practice for interviews. You actually have to go and actually take the time to study and practice for these interviews because if you want to pass an interview, it takes you prep working and understanding what the company is about, who works for the company, why they work there, how long they've been working there. You want to already do research of who's going to even interview you. That way you can leverage that during the interview. Um, that way they're going to feel comfortable. They're going to understand, okay, this person cares about this company. Um, that way they can get that sort of feeling. So um, once you do that uh, and you actually um, did the prep work about the company, the company like image, how long they've been a business and all that stuff, then you're going to use that um, to the interview. Um, and obviously during the technical interview, they're going to ask you your experience what you do, uh, what have you done in your previous role. So you're going to talk about that. And like I said, same with the recruiter call, use that experience that you've had, that you've done um, 
and sort of tie that in and make it relevant to what the company is looking for. That way, you know, it's just going to be you know, relevant because you could talk about your experience for a whole hour, but only give them what's relevant to what the company needs. And that's going to be from the company description and all that stuff. And um, yeah, once you get all that, um, and then you go ahead and answer the interview questions, then they're going to go from tell me about yourself and what you do to, okay, we're going to switch gears and maybe ask you some technical questions. So don't get scared here. This is where you should have practiced um, and prepped some of these interview questions. The most common interview question is, what's the difference between TCP and UDP? What are the OSI models? Tell me what a router is, what a switch is. Um, how would you submit an I slash 28 IP address? Um, what's ARP? What's, what's DHCP? What's DNS? What's telnet? What's SSH? What's encryption? They're gonna ask you these like what is questions or have you worked with questions? So they may ask you, hey, have you worked with wireless controllers? You'd be like, yeah, I've worked with wireless controllers. I've did it um, in a lab environment. Um, obviously, you don't say packet tracer, but you can say in a lab environment where I configured these wireless controllers that were connected to access points within the network, and I was able to remotely um, activate these access points, um, distribute them throughout the network. So you can just say that, and then obviously give more context. The types of access points, like the actual vendor, is it a Cisco? Is it a uh, is it a uh, Aruba? What type of access point? What kind of um, iOS version of his, um, like version of the devices? Talk about that stuff. Give give very detailed context of what you do. Once you do that, it's going to ask you more technical questions. What's TCP? What's UDP? Um, what's what's the difference in IP address? And the way I like to tackle these questions is to bring it back to my previous experience um, and talk about how the difference is or my favorite answer for TCP UDP is like uh, TCP is basically like connected to web. Um, and then UDP is assuming this is a remote call. I say UDP is essentially um, the call we're having now. The traffic that's being sent is UDP uh, because it, it's very time sensitive and the traffic has to be sent um, as needed, like as soon as possible, as opposed to TCP where there's a TCP handshake involved and that's going to take time to send um, to, you know, work. So those are the two main differences. And I, you know, but that's where you have to practice these very common interview questions. Now, let's say you run into a question where you're like, I don't know what the answer is. I, I have no idea what the answer is. That is totally fine. You only have to say is, I'm not sure how to, I'm, I'm not, I've never heard of that before, but this is how I go about finding the answer. Then you would talk about, you know, you'd use Google or AI or whatever the answer is. And then you would follow up by saying, can you please tell me more about that? And then you want to grab a piece of paper and actually take notes of what the interviewee is saying about that particular technology that you're not aware of. That way, he's gonna, he or she is going to see that you're an active learner and willing to learn. Um, and that's a very important thing because within network engineering or any field in tech, there are going to be things that you just don't know. That is completely fine, completely normal, but it requires you to understand and be humble about it and not just say, yeah, I don't know the answer and I don't care. Be willing to learn because if you're not willing to learn, then the tech field is not just, is not, is not for you. So these are the most important things when it comes to landing a technical interview. And then once you do that, you're going to probably going to have multiple rounds. And after each round of interviews, you want to take notes of all the questions that were said and then study those because most likely those are going to be the same questions you're going to get on the next interview. So keep practicing. Um, and then at the end of the interviews, they're going to ask you, do you have any questions for me? And this is where people fumble the bag because they say, ah, I don't have any, I, have, I don't have any questions and that's it. It's over. You need to ask as many questions as possible until they say, Hey, I don't have enough time. And, and in terms of questions, if you don't, you have to ask team specific questions, how big is a team? What sort of projects are you guys working on right now? If you can tell me, um, you know, what, what is it like working here? Also, like, you know, if you were to hire me today, where exactly do you see me fit in this particular company? Um, also say like, you know, why are you looking to hire a new engineer? I see you guys have a really good team. What exactly do I, can I bring to the table um, to this particular team? You know, bring those kind of questions where it involves you and they're going to talk about you in the particular company and you're going to have the interview with trying to picture you working there. Um, and then you want to have as many questions as possible, you know, and have those questions lined up and you want to keep going with questions and one of the best questions I like to say is like, tell me your biggest outage story. You know, those are always fun to say, or tell me about a time, you know, tell me, you know, why, why, why do you like work at this company? Like why this company? And then, you know, ask each person. And 
the more questions you ask, the more they're going to feel comfortable. And the longer the interview goes, the, the higher chance you are going to have a successful interview. The quicker the interviews are, most likely they didn't go well. Um, because maybe they're just like, okay, this person's not qualified. Let's just quickly move them on. But the question is the most important thing. And the last question you have to ask is, hey, um, I really do appreciate you t taking the time for interviewing me. Um, you always want to say, about the, say their name. And then you want to say, what are the next steps from here? And they'll tell you the next steps and whatever and say, okay, well, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And then boom, the interview's over. After that, you want to send them a thank you email. A thank you email saying, I appreciate you guys so much for taking the time to interview me just to be thankful for it. You know, they're actually, these companies are taking their time out of their busy working lives, working days to go and actually interview you for a position. So the least you can do is send a thank you email to the people who interviewed you and saying, I appreciate the time. And that's it. So after you do that, you know, I know it's tedious, but it's so worth it. And, you know, you want to build a connection with these people. So hopefully I kind of gave you the crash course of, um, of passing a network engineering or really any IT job interview. Um, it's really just that it's, you got to learn the skill obviously, and then research the company beforehand, research who's interviewing you, um, learn, um, you know, based off the, the job responsibilities, try to learn and see what kind of potential questions are going to ask. If you don't know how to answer the question, go back. I told you how to answer that sort of question. Um, and then ask a lot of questions at the end. Um, and also try to ask questions during the actual interview as well. Not just like, like when they're interviewing you and, you know, maybe ask a follow-up question, like, you know, have you worked with this? And then you talk about you working with that and you want to say at the end, Oh, have you guys worked with that? Like, is, are you guys doing that over there? That's really awesome. Like that's, a, that's a really good thing to say during the interview. So, um, I feel like this has maybe given you guys a lot of insight in terms of interviews. And maybe if you guys are looking to get better at interviews, um, I do have a mentorship program where I literally teach you exactly how to land network engineering roles and actually pass network engineering interviews. So if you guys are interested in that, please click the link down below. Uh, and I can show you exactly how to do that. Um, but with that being said, everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you guys like the video, give it a like. If you guys want to see more of this video, more types of these videos, please feel free to subscribe. And with that being said, everyone, have a good day and peace.